Welcome to the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I'm Lori Rivers with you, coming from the Oregon coast. It was a wonderful visit in the Portland area with my mentor and my spiritual teacher and soul sister, Thomas C. Chavez and Gabriel Chavez, both very dear-hearted, like-hearted friends. And I had the wonderful pleasure of having astrologer Casey with me and being my co-pilot. She navigated us down the coast tonight and we're on our way back to L.A. We are moving a little faster than we were, partly because I have not had much internet to work with. So if you're wondering why the sound quality is different, I'm doing this on my phone while I lay on a very comfy bed after a very long day, after a very hot day. And I don't know if you're aware of the the heat wave that's hitting the Pacific Northwest, but holy moly guacamole, it was hot. And uh, the Northwest isn't made for that kind of heat at all. I grew up there and it's just, um, well, it's really sad (laughs) is what it is. So we are in a cooler climate on the Oregon coast, heading back to Los Angeles. We're going to hit the Redwoods tomorrow. And that is always gorgeous. And we're going to really work at making some video content because we didn't get enough of that done because we were busy working and helping out my my friends and mentors, Gabrielle and Thomas C. Chavez. And it was an inspiring journey. I'll talk about more of that for patrons in a special podcast. But for now, we're looking at the new moon in Leo coming up on the 16th, early in the morning. If you are a patron and you get horoscopes and above, you have your monthly horoscope planner and there are new moon intentions in there. Go look at them. I will not have your pages done. I have not been able to get my computer to connect. I barely got it to connect at Starbucks um, to get just a piece of software downloaded that I needed to scan. Oh, well, I got three of 20 years, (laughs) three of 20 years of documents scanned up means, oops, I need another trip. So we're going to talk about the Leo new moon and what I meant on my TikTok when I said, if all you're doing is looking at the rubble, you cannot see the path and what that means for you. And we'll answer some astrology Q&A and I'm sure find something inspiring to talk about and of course as always we've got our patron shout outs because without patrons there is no awake space astrology podcast so here we go let's get to that new moon Well, let's talk about plans and plans not working out because if you're like me, (laughs) they've turned out in unexpected, delightedly awesome ways. And yet there were many things that uh, went awry, such as no internet connection. I couldn't even read for clients. I had to reschedule. And uh, my deepest apologies to those of you I had to reschedule because that is something I do not like to do but the internet connection wasn't working for me. And yet I've been at this metaphysical game long enough to know that when plans aren't working out, there's usually another, often better, plan in store, even if it makes you uncomfortable. So let's talk about why I made the TikTok about the Leo new moon, where I said, If you're focused on the rubble, you cannot see the path. This new moon in Leo on the 16th of August is opening a road. But it's probably also taking a plan you were hoping for to turn out or have, if you've had a strong fixed idea of what is ideal, your ideal job, your, 
your, you know, dream job. We hear that a lot. I don't know. I don't like working for other people, so I don't understand the idea of having that be a dream. No judgments from me. I just think about that for a second. Why do you think you have a dream job? Because your value might be wrapped up in what you do instead of who you are? Ah, damn those awarenesses. So, we live in a post-industrial world in late-stage capitalism, and we've all been taught and trained that in order to be of value, we have to do something important. We have to be a somebody. But aren't you a somebody already? This Leo new moon is in the last decan of Leo. It has an Aries quality. It is about identity and setting identity. And you cannot be in alignment with your actual identity if you are adhering to an identity that was superimposed upon you by family, by school, by the media. And deconstructing that is very important when it comes to navigating your life in an authentic way. doesn't mean we abscond with responsibility. We don't take care of our bills or we don't, you know, do the things we have to do in the world. Of course we do, you know. Well, I mean, you might not and then you have consequences. But have you ever asked why your dream job is your dream job? Have you ever asked yourself why you attach what you do to the importance and and validation mechanism the way you do instead of really just getting down and dirty with the magical, mystical being that you are as a bipedal primate kind of skipping along in life on this planet earth you have value regardless of what you do or don't do in this world because the odds of you being human were one in 400 trillion one in 400 trillion how can you not be valuable everyone even the people we don't like have value Maybe not the value they like to attest to, but everybody has value. But the value you need to concentrate on is your own, especially with the new moon in Leo, because again, it has a a light top note of Aries. So what about plans going awry? This week, my internet didn't work. Again, I had to reschedule readings. I hate doing that. Why? Why? I don't want to look like a flake. I'm a professional. Professionals have these standards. And I'm also human and subject to the transits. There's a misconception in the spiritual world that teachers and mentors need be paragons of virtue. And that's not true. Or paragons at all, where they have no problems, their poop doesn't stink. In fact, if if you paid attention to some of the people out there that tout teachings, you might think they don't poop at all, which is ridiculous. They have a human body. Of course they do. Of course they have days. People are absolutely flabbergasted when a celebrity does something immoral or unethical how dare they they have this place of high esteem because they're freaking human and so are you so if you're beating yourself up because things didn't go right because you tried something again and again and again and it didn't work out or you had your hopes set on something and now nothing will ever be the same again because this thing didn't work out I want you to adjust your attitude for like three seconds. And I want you to hear me because it's really, really important because the losses will be felt before the new moon if there are losses, but they're not real losses. 
If you focus on the rubble, you cannot see the path. What if the rubble was made up of of a, a, some kind of tower that was locking you away from your intended purpose? What if it was some kind of obstacle or wall that encased you in a prison of conformity? What if that's the rubble and the pathway to yourself is exactly what's on offer? And that's the scariest path to take because you don't know what's around the next corner. You don't know what's around the next bend. Tonight, Casey was driving down a very unfamiliar highway in the dark. And occasionally she'd say, it's just a little unnerving because I can't see much further than this ahead. I don't know what's next. I thought, what a great euphemism for life. Because you can have it all planned out. And for a while, that'll work. When you're in school, you can plan an educational track. That educational track will take you to the next educational track. And that next educational track will take you to the next educational track. The minute you walk out those doors with a little piece of paper in your hand and you find out how the world works, those plans don't always go the way we want them to because we have to deal with a non-linear system called life. It's fluid. It's fluid. And your value isn't in what you do. It is in who you are. And I can think of nothing more appropriate to talk about when it comes to that Leo new moon in the last decan of Leo represented by Aries. And yes, I do not use the planets to rule the decans. I use the signs because they are descriptive. Planets are non-descriptive, okay? They're not descriptive. The signs are descriptive. Describes the quality of the energy. And so, you want to listen to your impulses. Not the impulse to throw your hairbrush into the mirror because your hair didn't work out. I don't know, just me. Um, Not the impulse to slap somebody silly who insulted you. Not the impulse to get into an internet fight or discussion with somebody with diametrically opposed political ideas. Instead, that little impulse to take that road less traveled. Like, maybe I should just turn left instead of right. Maybe I need to call Bob today. I haven't talked to Bob in 10 years but I feel like talking to Bob. Or hmm, maybe I should go get ice cream. Those little light thoughts, those impulses are going to be your guiding light during and after the new moon on the 16th of August. When we listen to the impulse, the light thought, the still small voice, we are actually paying attention to messages from our higher self, from what some people call the big self or the greater part of the self, the the more aligned self. We have all kinds of moral words around it, all kinds of judgment words. And people say, oh no, but it's good. But yeah, good's a judgment, right? Because somehow... There's so many who want to make being human a faulty thing when we're here for the experience. We talked a little bit about that at the meetup with patrons today. It was a good conversation. It's important as we move through the gibbous phase of the moon to understand that you will feel You'll feel the walls coming down. You'll feel the vulnerability of authenticity, of yourself laid bare in what can feel like a hostile world. It doesn't have to be a hostile world. 
But it can feel that way. It can feel that way due to lots of things, externalized circumstances like climate change, economic impacts, dynamics between family members, dynamics between friends, dynamics between you and your dog. It's vulnerable to choose an authentic pathway. And that is self-mastery. And no one fully masters the self in any singular lifetime. No one. Not one figure. I don't care what the literature says. Because once you have perfection, you have entropy to follow, which means there's a falling apart. Because there's nowhere else to go from perfect. So mastery is not about perfection. It's about being really good at practice and the ability to describe what you have learned in ways other people can understand. To be able to have conversations about it, either with cohorts and colleagues or as a teacher to those a few steps behind. Nobody walks alone. That's the illusion. Everybody thinks they're the only person that's ever had X, Y, or Z happen to them. I had a really good friend who was in the 12-step program called Alcoholics Anonymous. And they had a phrase that they introduced to me, and it was terminal uniqueness. And it's when we think we're the only person who's ever suffered what we've suffered. And I know I've certainly been there. We all suffer something. All of us. There is no one person who had it perfect. There's no one person who had it easy. Even the privileged. And I know you'd be like, but, 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 Lori... You have no idea until you know somebody's story, what they've been through. Privileged privileged people get beaten. Privileged people get raped. Privileged people have heartbreak. They just get to do it more comfortably, which would be nice, right? Everyone has a struggle. Just because we don't know what that struggle is does not mean They do not have it. But we're not doomed to struggle. Right? Remember? What's one of my favorite sayings? Do you guys remember? Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. And when we walk just long enough, it doesn't even have to be forever. When we walk just long enough on a path to self-mastery, we start to notice when we are continuing a pattern of suffering past its usefulness. Because sometimes it's useful. Sometimes, and I'm not talking about gross abuse at this point, but sometimes having that contrast in life is useful to get us to take action. And that's what I'm talking about, the rubble. Again, if that thing you wanted didn't turn out, well, that doesn't mean there isn't something better on the way, more authentic on the way. Something that's a better fit on the way. What if you were compromising? What if you were settling for what you think you can get? What if you weren't accepting all that you can have? Because you didn't want to be greedy. You didn't want to be selfish. You didn't want to be one of those people. I don't know about you. I've done that. You don't want to look conceited. You don't want to look like a bragger. You don't want to look arrogant. You want to be humble because you're a good person. You're a spiritual person, right? Blah, 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 blah. Right? 
with this new moon in Leo, you really want to lean in to who you know you are in your heart of hearts and have always been a little shy of admitting it, especially to yourself. Especially to yourself. All right. It is one, one, one. I'm going to leave that there. We're going to do some patron shout outs. And we'll see where we go from there. You heard the music. You know what time it is. It is time for patron shout outs. Patron shout outs. Oh, patrons, you will be getting horoscopes. I'm sorry you haven't got them yet. Uh, again, no internet connection, and I can't get those there, get them done yet. All right, let's talk about our new folks. We've got Deborah, Marilyn, CM, Vivian, Valerie, Patricia, Nikki, Courtney, Ariana, Mary Frances, Patricia, Aaron, Jesse. Cheyenne, Crystal, Allie, Beth, Louisa, Alyssa, Paola, Superplin, and Irene. Thank you guys for being patrons. I'm super excited to have met everybody. Uh, Super excited to have met everyone that we met on Sunday, August 13th in Oregon City. It was a really lovely meetup. Wasn't it, Casey? <laughs> oh, she has her headphones in. <laughs> I said, wasn't the meetup great? Oh, it was so great. Everyone was so fun and sweet. So, great to be there. We're really tired. It's 1.14. <laughs> so, I'm going to finish up um, I'm going to finish up recording this and then we're probably just going to crash. Got to get up early because we're doing the Redwoods tomorrow. We're going to do more patron meetups coming up in the future. Um, and for all of you who asked me to come to Seattle, probably not. <laughs> if you're a patron, you can ask me why in the Discord. All right. Uh, let's see. We'll get to the next segment and we'll be answering some astrology questions there. So, a few of you asked about manifesting and new moons, and I thought I'd give that a whirl, since I've got like four or five of you asking about it. You're setting intentions on a new moon. And it is from intention that manifestation occurs. Okay? If you are clear and intentional and deliberate... You build up the energy around yourself to receive. Now, some things take longer to manifest than others. You know, we could have a miraculous event where you make a universal ask and something suddenly appears. It usually takes practice or the times that this often happens for people is when the weight of the world isn't on their shoulder. It doesn't feel life and death. It doesn't really matter. And it's not because you can only manifest things that don't matter. It's just you, there's not as much stuff in the way. And what stuff can be in the way? Well, not thinking you deserve it, not thinking you can have it, thinking it's too big of an ask, thinking it's very hard and challenging. All of those things can cause um, a delay 
or just extend the time period it needs to cook before it can happen. And then sometimes things just, it's about timing. It's about timing. You know, if, if we could just wave a magic wand and everything happened exactly the way we wanted it every single time with no bumps or bruises, it'd be kind of boring. And I know that, you know, if you're struggling, then you're kind of like, well, no, actually, it sounds kind of nice, <laughs> right? So with this new moon, like I said, if you get horoscopes and above in the Patreon, you've got your your August horoscope planner. Oh my God, just wait till September. It's so pretty. Um, and I will get you pages for this week. And But you do have the new moon intention setting suggestions. If I were in your shoes... And I was looking at setting intentions for this new moon. I would really be looking at setting intentions in a way that opens life up in a positive way for me to live more authentically. And I would add in that I wanted it to be easy and joyful. Because a lot of times we think if, if we really want something, we have to martyr ourselves You know, we have to be good people. We have to over-obligate ourselves. We have to be overly responsible. And we don't have to be. That's not required of you, ever. That is social and cultural conditioning. And people would be like, but it's in all the major religions. Well, all of the major religions kind of came out of the Bronze Age, which is when we really started controlling people. And organizing civilization, which is kind of silly. And it really made a hierarchical system of betters and lessers and deserving and undeserving. And we all come from that in some way. Yes, we all have to some degree or another amount of privilege in that system. But at the end of the day, when your value has been assigned by the labor you do or the labor you direct, or an end product, and not who you really are. Not the fact that you live and breathe here on planet Earth and you're part of a greater scheme. That's really hard to describe in any meaningful way, and so we try to codify things and put labels on things because, you know, we're human and that's what we do. Manifestation means to be revealed, which means it's already in existence. If you want to make something happen, that something has to be really clear in our minds. It's not a fantasy. We talked a little bit about reality and fantasy today, or yesterday, I should say, at Thomas and Gabriel's, and... What What is reality? And I've been talking about that when it comes to Neptune, right? What's reality? People tell you, oh, don't be delusional. Don't be delusional. But, but their hard grounded reality is is not necessarily natural to the human condition. It was imposed. A lot of the structures in our society and culture were designed to indenture people, to control people, to keep them small. And so the idea that you have to be perfect or you have to do things exactly right to make something happen, which is manifest, isn't correct. You have to be clear. And you have to be clear inside of yourself, clear, like clear for takeoff. Not just clear visually or clear mentally. You need to clear the way. And so sometimes to make something we really want to have happen, other stuff we thought we wanted or needed kind of has to be cleared out of the way to make room. It's kind of like if you have living room furniture and you want to buy new furniture, you can buy the new furniture, but if you don't have space to put it, how are you going to enjoy it? You got to have, something has to move out of the way. 
And what needs to move out of the way is doubt, self-criticism, worry, resentment, irritation. Those things get in the way of manifesting. And if you've watched me in a live stream, you know I put my hands together and I say, if you're praying, please, 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 and your hands are together or they're clenched, you can't open the catch until you open the catch. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm not great at playing games that require catching, right? The universe can be throwing you gift after gift after gift, but if your eyes are closed and your hands are closed, you cannot catch it. It'll bean you in the forehead, but it doesn't mean you'll be able to catch it, right? With this Leo new moon, you want to put your focus on what enlivens you, where you get the most physical energy, where you get that heart warmth or the joy, the little leap of joy, the champagne bubbles, the butterflies in the belly, not the nervous kind, the fun kind. That's what you're aiming for. And it depends on the person on where Leo falls in your chart, especially 23 degrees. Okay. Which means you need to be able to find 23 degrees of Leo in your natal chart. And if you're a patron, there's all kinds of new stuff in the classes. Right? They're, they're linked up in the crunch reports. Now, I think the last crunch report I tried, guys. I know the links didn't get into that one. So you, you want to look at the one before that. Okay. But you can even go to my YouTube channel. I have beginning videos that walk you through. Okay. They walk you through finding the, the spots in your chart. That new moon is happening at 23 degrees of Leo. All right. I'm not talking about the moon in your birth chart. It's not your birth chart moon. This is a transit moon. And this is the time to sow the seeds of authenticity, of self-actualization. Remember, growing confidence, growing certainty of self, growing your identity, None of that is self-aggrandizement. None of that is arrogance. When I say kiss my accuracy, partly I do it as a joke. It's done with confidence. I can back it up. Only insecure people would think that it's arrogant. Right? I do that because I want women especially, but marginalized people of all kinds, to see somebody standing in confidence of their work. Intend with confidence to cultivate confidence. Intend with confidence to cultivate identity. I intend to cultivate with confidence enlivening opportunity. And if stuff doesn't work out the way you want, it's just making room for what is what you really want and maybe haven't let yourself believe you can have. But you got to turn your focus to it because if you're looking at the rubble on the road, you're going to miss your opportunities. So <clears throat> that's what we've got today. Because it's really late and we've got a long drive through the Redwoods tomorrow and Casey and I are, good, are determined to do more videos than we got done. <sighs> like I said, the best laid plans, the best laid plans. And yet, it was a really beautiful experience and I'll record a little podcast for patrons and talk a little more in depth about kind of the mystical, magical happenings that occurred visiting my dear friends Thomas C. Chavez and Reverend Gabriel Chavez who are wonderful magical mystical beings all right have a wonderful Monday and I hope we got perfect parking parking and I hope 
I hope distract you from some mundane task. Thank you. Thank you for listening.